While wobbly might not sound like an appealing characteristic for food, it's the perfect description of the ideal texture of scrambled eggs. A quick blast of heat turns lightly beaten eggs from a runny liquid into a wobbly semi-solid, capable of holding its shape on the plate. While most cooks focus on the role played by heat in changing the viscosity of the eggs, it turns out that the supporting ingredients, especially fat, are nearly as important to make this transformation happen successfully. Before we get into making scrambled eggs, let's review some basic egg science. In raw eggs, globular protein strands are tangled and interspersed with water molecules. Now, heat causes the protein strands to align and bond together into a mesh-like network, creating a lattice gel that traps some of the water in the eggs. This network gives cooked eggs their structure and allows a liquid to transform into a semi-solid that you can pick up with a fork. How much heat is applied will affect how tightly these strands bond together, and in the end determine the final viscosity of the dish. With just the right heat level, the eggs will be set, but a bit wobbly. Too much heat, and they will be completely firm and dry. Whether making scrambled eggs, an omelet, or even creme brulee, eggs can be tricky because changes in temperature have a huge effect on viscosity. There's a very fine line between underset, perfectly set, and curdled. Luckily, in the kitchen, we can add ingredients to the eggs that will buy a little bit more leeway. Fat is especially important because it slows down the coagulation process, that network that's forming. It keeps the protein strands from bonding too tightly. So this softer, looser lattice network also does a better job of holding onto moisture. It doesn't squeeze it out. So the eggs turn out tender and moist. When fat is not part of the mix, the protein strands can bond very tightly together and actually squeeze most of the moisture out of the eggs. This is why overcooked eggs are often weeping, and I have a plate of scrambled eggs to demonstrate this weeping. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of liquid running out of the eggs. So what happened is these eggs were cooked too hot and for too long. That protein network squeezed really tightly together, and you can see the moisture that is escaping. There are two likely sources of fat in most egg recipes, butter and liquid dairy such as milk or cream. Let's start by looking at butter and its role in a perfect French omelet. Now in our recipe, we add small cubes of frozen butter, as you can see here, to the eggs before they go into the pan. The fat in the butter slowly melts during cooking, coats the egg proteins, and produces an omelet that is tender but set. So to demonstrate this, I've cooked two omelets. One is just eggs and salt. For the second omelet, I've added a half tablespoon of butter, cut into tiny cubes and frozen, so that it will melt slowly to the eggs and salt. Each omelet was cooked the same way until just set. I have two two-pound lead fishing sinkers. Now, this is not the common use for them. What I'm going to do is place one sinker on each omelet. We're going to see how sturdy they are. This is the omelet that's just eggs and salt. See if I can get it to balance. Okay. So as you can see, it's really sturdy. Now the second sinker goes on these eggs, and that's easy to set up because it flattens so much. This omelet is so tender and delicate that it can't support the weight, which is a good thing. I'd rather eat a tender, delicate omelet than one that is tough enough to support a lead weight. Now when making scrambled eggs, most recipes will add some water or dairy to the eggs. That's because you need a lot of steam to create really fluffy eggs. While it's true that the eggs themselves contain a fair amount of water, the whites are about 88% water, while the yolks are about 50% water, we still need more in order to get those fluffy curds that we're looking for. In the test kitchen, we prefer dairy to water because the fat coats the proteins and slows down the coagulation process, so it provides more margin for error. Cream, which a lot of people use in their scrambled eggs, it works well, at least from a technical standpoint, but the dairy flavor is pretty overwhelming. The scrambled eggs taste like creamed eggs instead of eggs. Milk is okay. The egg flavor isn't obscured the way it is with cream, but there's so little fat in milk, usually in the range of 3.5 to 4%, that it doesn't provide all that much protection. We found that half and half is the perfect compromise. It has about three times the fat that you find in milk, so you get plenty of protection from the fat, but half and half doesn't overwhelm the egg flavor the way the cream does. Plus, we found an easy way to boost the egg flavor we actually add a couple of extra yolks to the mix. And to be precise, we're using two extra yolks for eight whole eggs. So I'm going to add those now. 
As an added bonus, the extra fat in the yolks actually raises the coagulation temperature of the mixture. What that means is it's going to take more heat and more time to cook the eggs. This helps prevent overcooking. Many recipes suggest that whipping the eggs very violently before scrambling them is key. Well, we've actually found the opposite to be true. Overbeating can actually cause premature coagulation of the egg proteins, simply by physical manipulation. Now, when overbeaten egg whites are cooked, they turn out tough instead of tender. You do, however, need to start with uniform eggs. You don't want any blobs of yolks or white in the mix. But for that, we're just going to use a fork to whip the eggs instead of a whip. Now, a fork is a lot more gentle. It's going to provide us a nice smooth yellow color throughout, but without overbeating the eggs. So I'm going to add my half and half. And that's a quarter of a cup. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon each of salt and pepper. Now I'm just going to whip with my fork. I like to puncture the yolks beforehand. It makes them easier to incorporate. Okay, that looks good. Nice uniform yellow color. Now you've probably noticed that I added salt to this mix. Now a lot of cookbooks suggest waiting to salt the scrambled eggs until they hit the table. The danger, they suggest, is that salt beaten into raw eggs can make them watery. To see if this was actually true, we salted beaten eggs one minute before cooking and another batch right after scrambling. We found that the eggs salted after scrambling were firm and a little bit rubbery. By comparison, the eggs salted prior to cooking were tender and moist. So what's happening? It turns out that salt affects the electrical charge on the protein molecules in the eggs, reducing the tendency of the proteins to bond together with each other. A weaker protein network, just as when we add fat, means the eggs will cook up tender, not tough. So as an aside, lemon juice can actually have a similar effect on eggs. A strong acid, lemon juice affects the electrical charge on the protein molecules in the eggs. This causes them to form a weaker network when heated. This phenomenon allows us to cook lemon juice and egg yolks into a smooth, soft lemon curd without risk of curdling the eggs. Okay, so we're ready to cook our eggs, but first we need to decide what kind of pan to use. A nonstick skillet is the best option for eggs because it allows you to use very little fat. We can use just one tablespoon for four servings of eggs without the risk of the eggs actually sticking to the pan. Now with this many eggs, you may be inclined to reach for a large pan, but that's not the best idea. In a large pan, the eggs spread too thin, which really increases the risk of overcooking them. Instead, we opt for a 10-inch skillet for these eggs. The small pan forces you to mound the eggs on top of each other. This traps steam and ensures tender, fluffy eggs. Okay, so I'm setting my heat to medium-high. Now if we use lower heat, which you see in a lot of classic French recipes, the pan isn't hot enough to generate enough steam to make those puffy curds that we like. I'm going to also add a tablespoon of butter to the skillet. Okay, so now that the butter has melted, I'm going to add my eggs all at once. I'm going to use my wide spatula and I'm going to constantly scrape along the bottom and sides of the pan to form really large curds. So at this point in the recipe, you have a lot of control over the sides of the curds. If I were to use chopsticks or something very small and a lot of motion, I can make very small curds. But we're after the really nice fluffy ones. So as you can see, the eggs are trapping a lot of that steam generated from the medium-high heat. And they're starting to thicken. Now 
Now, as soon as my spatula leaves a trail on the bottom of the pan that doesn't fully fill in, I'm going to drop the heat down to low. And that's happening right now. So we've already gotten lots of steam into our eggs. And at this point, we just want to be as gentle as possible. So I'm folding them over, making sure to retain those nice big curves. So these are just a little bit wet at this point. Um, I'm going to get them out of the pan onto the plate as they're going to continue to cook. They have a lot of heat trapped inside them. All right, so there we go. Nice wobbly plate. So this two-level heat method is very important to this recipe in achieving the eggs that we want. If you have an electric stove, which isn't as responsive as gas, we suggest heating a second burner to low heat and sliding the pan from the hot burner to the cool one in order to make that process work. So, as you can see, these eggs have transformed from a runny liquid into a wobbly semi-solid. I'm going to give them a try. Mm. They're really well seasoned because we have that salt in from the very beginning. They're really tender and fluffy. And as you can see, there's no weeping on the plate. So there you go. That's all the tricks to perfect scrambled eggs every time.